Hey friends, this is Christopher Davis Shannon and over the next few weeks I am going to show you how to begin improvising or constructing solos on ukulele. And even if this is your first week with the instrument or if you have been playing for 10 years, I want this to be accessible to everyone. I firmly believe that improvisation is one of the best things you can do for your musicality and to help develop your ears. So let's get started. First, I want to tell you exactly what I'm not going to be doing in this series. I am not going to be showing you a ton of scales. I'm not going to show you any cool blues licks. I'm not going to tell you that you should be playing your Mixolydian mode over top of a dominant chord because I simply don't care. I care if it sounds good, and improvisation doesn't need to be something that's hard. And in fact, it's something we do as children all the time. We make things up. But music is a rudimentary language, and every genre of music has its own sort of dialect in that language. We're going to be looking at this through sort of an early jazz um, or traditional jazz sort of lens, but these principles really apply regardless of what type of music you want to play. After you get around just basic improvisation, then it's time to dive into your specific style of music, start transcribing, start figuring out what the masters were doing, what makes it sound like that. But for the basics, this is going to get you going. So we're going to use the tune When the Saints Go Marching In, a nice easy three chord song that all of us are familiar with to start soloing over. But the first thing is first, we need to learn the melody to the song. Now the melody When the Saints Go Marching In is what we call diatonic melody. It's just the notes in our C major scale. Nothing fancy. I think most of us know this, but let's look at the melody. So we have our first look. We have C, E, F, G. I want you to pay close attention to where we're holding notes out and where these spaces are. We're going to need that in a minute. Then we repeat the same thing. C, E, F, G. Repeat it again. C, E, F, G. Then we change it. E, C, E, D. E, E, D, C. C, E, G, 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 F. E, F, G, E, C, D, C. So we're only using two, three, four, five notes in this entire melody. So let's just try playing this along together. One, two, three, four, one. Now the first method that we're going to use for improvisation is what's called column response. And this is something that dates back thousands upon thousands of years. Remember that I said to note the space in the melody where we're not playing notes. Well now what we're going to do is create a conversation with ourselves. We're going to say that first melodic statement and then we're going to respond to it. Something simple. So let's constrain ourselves to only four notes. I think when you're starting out playing, just using even one or two notes can be good, but let's give ourselves four to play with so that we're not fishing all over. So we'll use the C on the third fret of our A string, B on the second fret, open A, and then G on the third fret of our E string. If you're on high G, you can also use that high G string. That works for you. So those are our only notes that we're going to use. So we want to think about how much space do we really have to fill in, right? Do, 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 one, two, three, four, one. Do, 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 do. So we only have five beats in here. And this is part of the reason I chose this song is because we have these rather short breaks. When we start to solo and improvise, we have a tendency to noodle. And really what that is is just a bunch of run-on sentences. By creating these smaller phrases and forcing ourselves to play shorter melodic statements, we can actually say a lot more than playing 5,000 notes. So let's look at something simple we could do to fill in that blank. So you have do, 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 do. 
we can just walk right on down. C B A G. And it comes back in. So maybe we do something the, the second time a little bit different. B, C, B, G. And we don't even have to do the entire, you know, statement here. We don't have to fill in the whole blank. Space is a beautiful thing. We could just play two notes. Simplicity is good. But what you're starting to do here is build your own vocabulary of phrases. And that's what's important, is to keep working on the rhythm how long and short the notes are. These notes matter a lot less than you think. The rhythm matters a lot more. We can just go through and we can play all these different rhythms on here to fill in the blank. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the melody and why don't you try filling in the blanks with these short melodic statements. What? Two, three, four, one. This video has been brought to you by me and the Tim Man's Magic Ukulele Strings, the only strings specifically formulated with Stardust for high G soprano ukulele. Get your set today. We have our call and response to fill in the blanks, but what if we just take that initial melody and we rephrase the melody? That is still improvisation. We're taking a theme and we are creating a variation of it. So let's just take that opening melodic statement of when the saints go marching in. Right, nice and simple. We're not going to change any of the notes, but now we're going to give ourselves freedom to play them for as many times as we want. We can play them with a different rhythm, it doesn't matter. So you could do something like this. Something nice and simple. How about this? Just simple little changes like this. So here's the first couple lines. Okay, I changed a little bit at the end. I lied to you there. But uh, most of what I'm doing here is just playing with the rhythm, how long and short the notes are. And that's really what we're looking at in this first lesson is just rhythmic diversity, trying to put new phrases, new rhythms in here. And if you're having trouble coming up with rhythms, there's some great ways that we can do this. And one of my personal favorites is to take Winnie the Pooh and take any line in here and read it, because we read with rhythm. We'll take a short phrase, because that's what we need, you know? Oh, when the saints, it's only four notes, so we don't have too much, so let's see. Suddenly, Winnie the Pooh stopped. Suddenly, Winnie the Pooh stopped. Nice, simple things like that. And reading a book and using your natural vocal cadence like that is a great way just to challenge yourself with new rhythms. So let's try this now. I'm not going to play the melody. I'm just going to play chords for you. And you try to play that melody, but put a new spin on the rhythm. One. Two, three, four, one. I hope you've enjoyed this little lesson. I know this seems very rudimentary for a lot of you, 
but we all need to start somewhere. If you'd like to dive deeper into this, please join me over on Patreon. I have a backing track that you could practice along with to your heart's delight over there. And we'll also be diving more into these rhythmic concepts in my live stream office hours this coming Friday. Next week, we're gonna shy a little bit more away from the melody and start to create our own melody while keeping that in the back of our mind. I'll see you all there.